the Skunk Works Logistics Corps has resumed operations again following the org restructuring at the start of the year and I've decided to spend a little time with them to learn about logistics in Star Citizen and see what the life of a logistics crew is really like. I was putting my caterpillar, the Skunk Works Atlas, to work as we set out to provide assistance to yet another station that has fallen under Ninetales blockade. This was familiar territory for me as I'd run these blockades recently during another lockdown. The blockade strength can range from extremely light to intensely PvP and when you're committing a million credits of your own money to the cargo, well it pays to take additional precautions. Picking up the supplies for Microtech's moon Calliope instead of the much closer moons of Crusader means we'll be moving along a much less travelled route and therefore a much less defended direction to approach from. And these blockade runs do pay well enough to support a crew on a logistics vessel, but more on that later. Just checking the base. Looks good, looks good. Okay. Excellent. On board the Atlas was logistics crewman White Cat. He came aboard before departure. This is like an old school adventure, this one. We need to make a quick stop to Port Trasler to collect our second crew member, mail me not, and then we could head to Crusader L4 Lagrange Point to run the blockade and resupply the station under siege. Okay, I'm closing up. Watch the turret, watch the turret. Oh god, I'm... I didn't even see it, the sun was in my eyes, so I didn't see it. and <laughs> they don't even get an icon. <laughs> We were on our way with crew aboard, but the Caterpillar is a large ship and its layout is somewhat unconventional. Not everybody on board was familiar with getting around, and in particular, where the turrets are. I am not 100% familiar with this ship. Where oh, follow me, okay, I'll show you where the front turret is. Come on. Um... Shim towards the front. <laughs> you seem to get there, you want to go backwards first. Oh, good. <laughs> Down here. Now we're going through here. And this will let us view the cargo of all. Look at that. Beautiful. Full of full of medical supplies. Nice. We're going to be running these to the station in but a moment. So many as well. A million credits worth. The way to do it. Okay, there you go, front turret. Nice. Where's the other turret actually? Because I've only ever been in the front one. And with both gunners now set, we were ready to run the blockade. Yeah, you're, you're like facing rearwards to me. Uh. Yeah, I guess there's some decent going on there. Okay, we're dropping out in a moment now, any second. Here we go. Two hundred kilometers out. We've got two oh, hostiles. Yeah. They appear to be turning around. Hundred eighty-six kilometers to go. There's another star lifter who is getting attacked by them. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, that's yeah. good for us, right? I mean, it's Rusto, um, like twelve o'clock high, maybe eleven o'clock high. So far we'd seen very little resistance and I recalled that Crew of 4 can be difficult to land at due to its shortage of hangars. I think Crew of 4 is the one with this, like only two hangars, so hopefully we'll be able to get, up, get in there and see Red's off to the port now. Oh, yeah, 30 kilometers. Yeah. As we got closer though, we'd pick up more ships. We were approaching from the quiet side though. Oh, hell, there's all the ships there. Oh, there's like, scanning ships maybe. So. No, oh, no, it's actually closing in. Yeah. I can see the engine. I can see the yeah, engine effects now. Now you guys can engage if you if you if it gets close. Yeah. That's below ahead of us on the station. Yeah. The red ping behind us. As long as this cutlass doesn't attack us, we don't have really have a reason to attack him. Uh, they're 25 kilometers out. It's getting closer. We're about to enter to the hangar. So okay. Roger. Yeah, I can't barely see it. Oh, barely can't. Wow, is he gonna try and crash into us or something? Jesus Christ! 
Jesus. Whoa! <laughs> it flew very, very close. Barely a fade of that. Good yeah, there's a Valkyrie closing in, but we should be now here by the time it gets to here. Thanks, so, yeah. Slow down. Good? Okay, good, good. I'm gonna go and um, I'll go and get this load sold. And I will pay you to find fine crew members. You've done an outstanding job on this one here. Yay, I get paid to sit here. <laughs> so after only very light resistance on the way in, it was time to take a trip to the admin office and drop off the supplies. So sell. We've got a caterpillar, medic supplies. On these runs, the actual profit from cargo isn't that great, but the bonus for supplying the blockade running mission is substantial. And I'd immediately pay the crew for the occur of what we just made. A paid crew is a happy crew after all. Initiating ship storage procedure. For your okay. safety, please vacate the area. Money has been sent. Run Thank one you. complete. We're all rich now, we're all... Yeah. Getting off the station here would not be so simple. These two hangars are in high demand during lockdown. Man. Okay. Right now, we are trapped within the blockade. Yes! <laughs> no, wait, what does that mean exactly? Okay, basically, they're only on this station, there are only two hangars, right? And obviously, they are popular because uh, people yeah. are trying to drop off medical supplies. So what that essentially means is right now, we All can't get... Please hold for assignment. We're officially part of the population of Kural 4 Shadow, Shadow Fields Station. It's a hot dog, so it's not, it's not a total loss. But more strangeness would follow. Oh, hang on, there we go. Wait a minute. This is not. Oh, this, there's, there's no ship here. There's no ship what? here. What? Where? It, what? It, it said hangar one, but there's no ship here. Look at this dude. He's like, why are all these people in, in the hangar? What's going on? I'm like, yeah, we are going to steal your ship. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, though, we'd get another hangar assignment. Okay. Hangar two. <laughs> void elevator. Void. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Better avoid that. Here we go. Hang on to you. I see. I do see the mark for the ship, so should hopefully be there. But also, we've got to refuel. So. I mean, we have to do that every time. What I like is that these stations that are so dependent on medical supplies, they can't go like an hour without having an enormous yeah, amount of like, it. <laughs> what are you doing with them? After some deliberation with the crew, we decided to go and try Crusader's Moons for collecting the medical supplies. The flight time is much lower, but I usually try to avoid these moons because everybody is using them and supply is limited. Wait times can actually end up much longer as you vie for the limited supplies available. Are we going to yellow or selling? Which one Which one has the things They both have it. Okay. Uh, on selling it's uh, Hicks and on yellow it's Whatever it's called, Deacons. Okay. We have line of sight to selling, and also selling has a weak, has a thinner atmosphere, so we should, in theory at least, be able to get down and up quicker. We've got two, looks like two, two ships at, at the, the place. An M2 and a C2. Yeah, we're good. It's actually the. Trading area is near the C2 on the other end of the outpost. There were a large number of star lifters here already. This was not a good sign. Okay, if you want to, if you want to move up to the bridge, then while I go in, yeah. I'm on my way. See, and people say logistics is a boring life. Yeah, when you've got a lot of money and you pour it all into like a set of goods in one ship, it, it, you can't say it's boring because it's fucking terrifying. <laughs> Yeah, the stakes are very high, right? Like, <laughs> like when you've got a million credits invested in a, in a, in a trip, the stakes get very high. Yeah, he sort of gets near there and he's like, don't bump anything. I 
Yeah. That's one. One dude. That's it. Not, not a big queue. We'd eventually get our supplies and could head back in. Hey, we are on our way. I, can, I love how I can still hear what you're feeling now as well. <laughs> the Caterpillar makes for a great transporter of cargo, and during a Nine Tails lockdown like this, you can put enough credits in to make the time worthwhile for a crew aboard your ship. Provided you have the initial investment capital, you can fill the cargo bay up completely and get out there and run the blockade. But Nine Tails are not always blockading stations, and so I wanted to know what kind of profits can be made running a Caterpillar like this under normal peacetime conditions. I'd used some third party trade tools in the past to find a trade route and move some cargo in the raft last year. And I'd use the same tools again here. I'm very much a beginner in this kind of role though, and I was just looking to trade whatever was available and see what it returned. The route chosen was Walla to Area 18, running Laranite, and I was heading to one of the mining stations on Walla to collect. But when I arrived at the trading terminal, well, the supply of Laranite was much, much lower than the trade tool indicated. Much lower. So I needed to fill up on various other materials too. I've since learned that the supply rate of goods is a very big problem for trading in Star Citizen in general. And so this shortage I saw doesn't seem out of character for a typical run. With the cargo being now full of metals and minerals, I was heading down to Area 18. And it was the first time in a while, actually, always special to revisit Area 18. Profit on a full caterpillar for this run? About 20,000 credits. Seems kind of low to me and definitely not enough of a payout to support a crew aboard a ship like the Atlas. No, if I was to get to grips with the real money maker of logistics, there was something I would finally really have to learn. Okay, pulling off, pulling away, pulling away. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, oh my god, oh my god. Oh, oh, oh. Goes real fast. Oof. Ship is. <laughs> I'm not dead, but like my ship is my ship is 100% disabled. So in this season of dynamic events, I would commit myself between running Jump Town and Nine Tails Blockades to learning to mine at last. Where to go, how to do it, and crucially, how not to do it. We'd also be following along with our logistics crews as they do their part to supplying the org with minerals, credits, and transport for heavy vehicles. I'd like to thank all of you for watching as always and send out a huge thank you to all of our amazing patrons who you can see on screen right now. Thank you all for your very generous support of the channel. Patrons like you are what make these videos possible. If you're thinking of starting Star Citizen yourself, use the referral code in the description below to gain an extra 5,000 credits when signing up for an account. We'll be back with more from Skunkworks Org very soon.